This is Lipia and it's time for a server room show. This is episode 47. I hope that everyone can hear me uh, well and uh, also you received the audio with the video feed and uh, both until the radio and then radio you guys can hear me. I'm running with a new setup uh, from a Linux workstation and uh, I will have an upcoming episode regarding that. How I set it up, most probably I made some mistakes for sure. Uh, as always, when you do something you have no idea about, but uh, for the moment I think it's uh, it's doing what I, I want it to do. Today I want to talk about remote management tools, and uh, it is all about those system and network administrators, especially the ones who would do everything remotely from the comfort of their own chair uh, and desk, preferably using their own computer and just do what needs to be done or dealt with at the company, infrastructure or network. I know this case because uh, I'm definitely one of those people. I love uh, any tool, uh, be it uh, software or hardware, which let me uh, deal with uh, with whatever I have to uh, in my in my professional setting remotely from from where I, where I want to to deal with and uh, not needing to travel somewhere or commute somewhere and uh, being um, some cold uh, and uh, unpleasant place but to do uh, things with my my own equipment and from uh, probably from the comfort of my own home that's the that's the best thing to to do so solutions from uh, remote management uh, or remote support tools uh, up to IPMI and this ILO and IDREC and, uh, and even to managed PDUs uh, all and everything which can help you be far away but uh, work just as efficiently from your own comfort just like if you were there wherever that uh, there might be or where they expect you to be so instead, uh, do what you can, uh, just like if you were if you're on location, from from the comfort of your choice. In band versus out of band uh, management, in band management is the ability to administer resources or network devices via the corporate LAN, while out of band management is a solution that provides a secure, dedicated alternate access method into an IT network infrastructure to administer connected devices and IT assets without using the corporate LAN. Hardware and software solutions uh, both exist for in-band and out-of-band management to help a system or network administrator achieve what uh, he or she has to, either from inside the corporate LAN while working from the corporate office or being on site, and also from remotely working from home or while being halfway on the other side of the country or continent. Money invested in all of these solutions are uh, fruitful uh, in in the long term when a technician has to travel less often, can work securely from a remote location without being put in harm's way, uh, unnecessarily I might add, uh, not even mentioning a situation when there is just no possibility to get to the location to deal with uh, an emergency, for example, let's say at uh, 2 a.m. in the morning and uh, maybe the closest uh, technician lives like an hour and a half uh, with regular commute and uh, yeah, maybe it's a bit less if he or she has a car but uh, who wants to go uh, on site to deal with um, whatever emergency situation if it can be dealt with uh, remotely and uh, and it's bad enough that you, you got the call and you had to, you had to wake up to, to deal with it. As we will see, some of these built-in out-of-band uh, management or, or in-band uh, solutions as well are coming as uh, standard on some devices and optional on some others or even requires a completely separate uh, appliance dedicated to serve a given task or purpose. When it comes to software, some exist um, far, uh, far, far from back from the 70s some solutions, both hardware and software, can be used both in and outbound um, access or management, while others are more suited for or dedicated to one approach or the other. 
out of band management mostly serves for emergency operations uh, and maintenance while in band management is more suited as per the nature of having this direct network access to the resources via corporate LAN during the normal business hours when it's possible as well to also a technician to walk up to that machine or server if he or she has to. Software solutions, uh, some of these you already know, maybe you even use it on a daily basis, just never thought of it consciously that it's uh, indeed a tool in the toolbox of remote management solutions. We can mention Telnet and SSH. Telnet is an application protocol used on the internet or local RN network to provide a bidirectional interactive text-oriented communication facility using a virtual terminal connection. User data is interspersed in band with Telnet control information in an 8-bit byte-oriented data connection over uh, the transmission control protocol TCP. Telnet was developed in 1969 and became one of the first internet standards. The name stands for Teletype Network. Historically, Telnet provided access to a command line interface on a remote host. However, because of serious security concerns when using Telnet over an open network, such as the internet, its use for its purpose has waned significantly in favor of SSH. The term Telnet is also used to refer to the software that implements the client part of the protocol. Telnet client applications are available for virtually all computer platforms. Telnet is also used as a verb. To Telnet means to establish a connection using the Telnet protocol, either with a command line client or with a graphical interface. For example, a common directive might be to change your password, Telnet into the server, login and run the passwd command. In most cases, a user would be Telneting into a Unix-like server system or a network device such as a, as a router. So SSH, uh, Secure, Secure Shell, is a cryptographic network protocol for operating network services securely over an unsecured network. Typically, applications include remote command line, login and remote command execution, but any network service can be secured with uh, SSH. SSH provides a secure channel over an unsecured network by using a client-server architecture, connecting an SSH client application with an SSH server. The protocol specification distinguishes between two major versions, referred to as SSH-1 and SSH-2. The standard TCP port for SSH is 22. SSH is generally used to access Unix-like operating systems, but it can also be used on Microsoft Windows, Windows 10 uses OpenSSH as its default SSH client and SSH server. Despite popular misconception, SSH is not an implementation of Telnet with cryptography provided by the Secure Socket layer uh, SSL. SSH was designed as a replacement for Telnet and for unsecured remote shell protocols such as the Berkeley RSH and the related R-login and REXEC protocols. Those protocols send information, notably passwords, in plain text, rendering them sus susceptible to interception and disclosure using packet analysis. The encryption used by SSH is intended to provide confidentiality and integrity of data over an unsecured network such as the Internet. Although files leaked by Edward Snowden indicate that the National Security Agency can sometimes decrypt SSH, allowing them to read modify and selectively suppress the contents of SSH sessions. SSH can also be run using SCTP rather than TCP as the connection-oriented transport layer protocol. The IENA has assigned TCP port 22, UDP port 22 and SCTP port 22 for this protocol. Another uh, pair of, uh, of software uh, technology, so to say, could be VNC and RDP. I'm sure you've also came across or used uh, these two as well. They are, they are pretty common. In computing, uh, virtual network computing, VNC is a graphical desktop sharing system that uses the remote frame buffer protocol RFB to remotely control another computer. It transmits the keyboard and mouse events from one computer to another 
relaying the graphical screen updates back in the other direction over a network. VNC is a platform independent. Uh, VNC is platform independent. There are clients and servers for many uh, graphical user interface based operating systems and for Java. Multiple clients may connect to a VNC server at the same time. Popular uses for this technology include remote technical support and accessing files on one's work computer from one's home computer or vice versa. VNC was originally developed at the Olivetti and Oracle Research Lab in Cambridge, United Kingdom. The original VNC source code and many modern derivatives are open source under the GNU General Public License. There are a number of variants of VNC which offer their own particular functionality. For example, uh, some optimized for Microsoft Windows or offering file transfer, uh, which is mm, normally not part of uh, VNC proper uh, and so on. Many are compatible without their added features with uh, VNC proper in the sense that a viewer of one flavor can connect with the server of another. Others are based on a VNC code but not compatible with standard VNC. VNC and uh, RFB are registered trademarks of uh, RealVNC, which is a, is a US company. RDP, uh, Remote Desktop Protocol, is a proprietary protocol developed by Microsoft, which provides a user with a graphical interface to connect to another computer over a network, uh, over a network connection. The user employs RDP client software for this purpose, while the other computer must run RDP server software. Clients exist for most versions of Microsoft Windows, including Windows Mobile. Um, funny to, to read it, <laughs> but yeah. Linux, Unix, macOS, iOS, Android, and other operating systems. RDP servers are built into Windows operating systems. An RDP server for Unix and OS X also exists. By default, the server listens on TCP port 3389 and UDP port 3389. Microsoft currently refers to their official RDP client software as remote desktop connection, and they used to call it uh, terminal services client. Let's look at some, uh, let's call them hardware solutions. I first want to draw your attention to all these acronyms like ILO drag and ILOM uh, kind of uh, management interfaces. These uh, these uh, three mentioned solutions are uh, silicon based, uh, custom chip by the manufacturer, and it built in uh, either as a standard or as an optional um, piece or hardware for uh, server products. These special hardware chips with uh, an RG45 port with the embedded software offers complete access to manage and troubleshoot and uh, to interact with the server. For example, to set it up from zero without any operating system being uh, previously installed and uh, also even without being uh, powered on, uh, it can be powered down and uh, all it needs that to have uh, uh, an active power connection and uh, and uh, and the network uh, cable plugged into to to these interfaces and uh, it can grab itself uh, the HCP IP address and uh, and you can interact with it even in this power down uh, so so to say standby standby status and uh, the server uh, in this example could be racked with uh, very minimal effort and configuration required as i said only power and uh, and the network cable needs to be plugged in uh, to the management interface there is no need to turn on the server and the uh, system administrator uh, remotely can power on the server both an uh, iso uh, format of an operating system to be installed uh, on the server uh, just like if it was a virtual cd and uh, he will, he or she will see and be able to interact with the server, just like if um, if 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 um, this person were present uh, with a keyboard and the mouse and the monitor plugged in locally in into this server, and uh, also will be able to interact and access 
BIOS and uh, other management consoles, uh, also including uh, pre-boot, uh, um, see, seeing pre-boot messages and, and being to be able to interact with uh, any pre-boot uh, uh, additional consoles when you have to configure, let's say, uh, a RAID card uh, settings uh, way before the operation, uh, the operating system is, is initialized in this uh, pre, uh, pre-boot uh, environments. Console servers, uh, they are a special kind of uh, hardware. They are this uh, mostly this dedicated 19-inch rack mount, 1U or, or even 2U uh, purpose-built devices with most of the time uh, proprietary embedded operating systems. Many of those lately are being taken over of these uh, proprietary embedded systems with uh, embedded Linux operating systems uh, such as BusyBox. This, this hardware uh, enables secure remote console management of any device with a serial or uh, USB console port, including uh, like Cisco routers or switches and firewalls, servers, uh, PBX uh, for uh, telephony, and, and, and similar. Single purpose built hardware solution which provides a secure alternate route to monitor uh, IT networking security and power devices from uh, multiple vendors. While software management tools can be used for performance monitoring and some form of remote troubleshooting, they uh, only work uh, most of the time when the network is up. A console server can ensure that uh, the on-site infrastructure is accessible even during uh, network outages. They can be used to reconfigure, reboot and re-image remotely uh, across the internet or uh, through uh, an, an additional WAN connection. Disruption and downtime are minimized by providing better visibility of the physical environment and the physical status of uh, equipment. And this ensures, uh, of course, business continuity through improved uptime and uh, efficiency. Normally, console servers provide various ways to securely access on-site infrastructures, such as uh, in a form of uh, 4G LTE modems, uh, additional Wi-Fi or uh, uh, V92-compatible uh, modem uh, add-on cards. Or, or even in a form of a dual uh, redundant uh, van uplinks. Uh, for example, one could be an RG45 copper, while the, the secondary van link could be an SFP uh, fiber network access ports. Uh, personally, I do have uh, two uh, console servers myself, one older one and uh, one newer one. And uh, I, I briefly used uh, uh, the older one, uh, which pretty much looks uh, very similar, like the like the one you can uh, see on my screen. It has uh, kind of like this RG45 ports, uh, all of them, 32 of them. Actually, the the model is called uh, Digi uh, CM32, and I did use it uh, successfully to. I mean, the first hurdle was, as it came without cables uh, of the manufacturer, is to figure out the, the pinouts uh, and to dig in documentation of uh, what kind of cable you need to use. And eventually I was lucky because I could use, I wanted to connect to some of my Cisco um, console ports on switches. And uh, I was able to, I was able to use uh, a Cisco rollover cable to, to connect to my to my uh, Cisco uh, switches so I didn't need to use any very special cable I could use the the one I've, I've already had and I think uh, also uh, a normal RG45 cable worked or I know that I thought that it would be hard to figure out the cable pinouts and I started to try the cables I had uh, in hand and, uh, and this, I, I remember the simplest cable worked, but uh, many times it can happen that if you want to connect to some uh, some special hardware from these console uh, console servers ports, 
you need to make sure that you are using the proper cable with uh, with some of them has uh, tricky tricky pinouts so to say and eventually what this box uh, uh, does uh, is exactly what i just described that um, in a form of uh, an out of band uh, or in the in the nature of out of band management you you access this uh, piece of console box either through a secondary uh, van uplink or through uh, a modem through or, or 4G LTE modem for example and uh, they can uh, they can handle uh, access uh, management through through various forms uh, and once you identified you drop to kind of like this embedded uh, system of theirs which could be uh, sometimes in a web browser or either from uh, from command line and uh, there is uh, kind of keystrokes or sequences to to access uh, the specific port and uh, and normally these connections uh, where where the other other end of the cable is connected is pre-configured and labeled and uh, it uh, it would make sure that you get a, a proper console window being it uh, ssh or being it uh, any any other type of uh, I, I type of uh, protocol or, or or method you you need to access that other piece of device you need to make sure that uh, it knows all those protocols and uh, forms of accesses that you that you want to do i think uh, one of my uh, console server even mentions apart from uh, of course ssh that i think it even mentioned vnc or rdp uh, I will dig into the documentation and look it up, and I was I was surprised, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it could could be, but uh, it was a bit strange for me. But I, I will I will investigate uh, further. Another uh, special uh, kind of box, so to say, is this typical KVM over IP uh, boxes. Remote server access uh, KVM over IP products are kind of like a new breed of uh, these non-intrusive hardware-based solutions which allow you both in-band and out-of-band network access to all the servers connect to your uh, KVM switch this keyboard, video mouse uh, switch utilizing advanced security and regardless of operating system this KVM over IP products allow you to remotely control all your servers uh, including these uh, important pre-boot uh, functions to be able to uh, access them and uh, perhaps make changes in the BIOS if you have to and uh, also go through uh, a power cycle which uh, sometimes can be uh, useful KVM over IP products allow you access via your internal LAN or VAN and uh, again offers connectivity via uh, intra internet or dial-in access it can be a modem, it can be old school ISDN, it can it could be 4G LTE uh, modules to provide as many uh, forms of uh, access in case of an emergency or a maintenance situation as uh, as much as possible. Access to these uh, IP uh, K KVM devices is uh, secured with uh, uh, hard network security. Uh, so it's not uh, no, it, it uh, you can be sure that the people who don't need to have access to this they they're not gonna have it and uh, they're not gonna grant be granted to it uh, utilizing all these advanced features in conjunction is uh, critical for remote maintenance uh, support and uh, failure recovery uh, for example like uh, data center devices so it's not just used in enterprises it's used in uh, in data centers and if there is some troubleshooting to do there it uh, it has to be done uh, uh, quick because uh, they provide the rest of their area with uh, with network connections so examples like kvm over ip uh, for out of band management uh, they offer uh, remote out-of-band access uh, again from anywhere in the world either through web browser or alternative uh, protocol 
it can be uh, either connected to a single server or using kind of like a KVM uh, gateway or a KVM switch to to connect up with uh, multiple uh, sources or, or destination Dep depends on how you look at it to to be able to remotely interact with uh, with them it can be K KVMs could be used in a in an in-band uh, uh, situation uh, kind of like a desktop over IP uh, kind of like a extended KVM uh, solution but uh, in this scenario it's uh, uh, routed via the internal LAN or, or wireless LAN to provide uh, a true desktop experience in a point-to-point -point or a point-to-multi-point uh, configuration this type of solution is very popular in the broadcast market or clean rooms, uh, secure computing environments and many other situations that require high, uh, higher resolution, USB for period of flexibility or environments that you cannot simply run uh, a CAT5 or, Cat5 or a fiber cable. And the ones who are looking at my screen can see some, uh, some, some example to, to, to this. So, for example, uh, this uh, kind of uh, in-band uh, KVM uh, IP solutions could be useful when imagine there is a there is a secure room which uh, no one supposed to access unless it's very very necessary, and for all kind of other operations, they interact with this piece of uh, server or computer. Or in in this example on my screen, it's a it's a desktop with two monitors and they interact with it uh, from in, in this secure room from uh, in this secure room from from another location even perhaps not even from from the same site and uh, they can use it just as if they were there but uh, but uh, but uh, they don't need to go and access this uh, location or facility um, access could be uh, as we mentioned web browser access uh, normally uh, kind of like a JavaScript uh, kind of plugin being used to 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 have the the control interface uh, up and running in a in a browser or uh, again VNC viewer uh, real VNC for example is a protocol which uh, normally is embedded into into these devices also serial console access is uh, is another form to to get uh, these KVMs uh, with RS232 or DB15 or these USB based serial ports uh, when they need to uh, manage uh, server switches, IP routers uh, through command line in command line interfaces, and serial console access allows for this text based administrative tasks such as uh, accessing the BIOS or boat loader, the kernel, the init system or the system logger and uh, serial control requires very little IP bandwidth and can be especially effective in low bandwidth uh, applications. And uh, the last piece of tool in the toolbox when all goes to bust and uh, you have uh, no other option than to cycle down or power down uh, reboot uh, force reboot uh, imagine if a system hung and you need to force reboot then there is no other means than connect into this uh, uh, switched and uh, sometimes even switched and metered uh, pdus power distribution units uh, which are quite expensive pieces of hardware and you remote into this and they are like expensive uh, uh, power plugs and you can remotely via the uh, out of band management network you can uh, assign a power circuit to a certain uh, socket and it would be the equivalent if you were there and physically unplugging and plugging back the, the power cable and this is your last resort but uh, uh, those uh, power plugs PDUs could come in uh, more handy uh, more often than, than you would think and uh, I'm just finished on time, so very rare occasion. I hope you guys all heard me and uh, have fun and uh, see you next uh, Saturday.